So I've said it before and I will say it again, every time AMD does something good, and I do mean every single time they turn around and do something just as just poopy as before. There's really no other way of looking at it. This year has been just a really good year for AMD. They launched Ryzen, they launched Threadripper, they've launched Vega. Their graphics cards have been flying off the shelf, if nothing else, just because cryptocurrency miners just love those cards because of their efficiency in mining uh, cryptocurrencies, especially Ethereum. But it does look like they're gonna round out the year with a negative storyline instead of a positive one. So before the RX Vega lineup was even launched, we had the RX 500 series, that'd be like the 560, 570, 580, and for the most part, those cards have been drastically overpriced because of that aforementioned cryptocurrency mining craze. Now, one of the cards that has been largely untouched by the price inflation associated with that cryptocurrency has been the RX 560, which has just sort of quietly existed for quite a while now competing with NVIDIA's GTX 1050. So it was originally spotted by a website called Heise.de, which is a German technology website, and then picked up by an Antec here uh, in the English speaking world. But basically AMD originally had launched the RX 560 with 16 compute units and you know, that's great, fine, whatever. Well, it looks like AMD may have quietly, uh, you know, nerfed the RX 560. So screen grabs from a uh, pre-summer 2017 show the RX 560 according to AMD's website having 16 compute units and then after the summer I think it was July when it was updated it showed 16 compute units but also possibly 14. So that also means that the original RX 560 had uh, 1024 stream processors and now the nerfed version, if that's the version you're unfortunate enough to pick up, has 896. Now I'm not faulting AMD for nerfing the RX 560 and bringing it to market. What the problem is, is that they kept the RX 560 name with no other disclaimer or no other sort of identifying factor on any of the marketing materials and it wasn't really declared at all that this was happening. So for the average consumer that's just walking into a big box store like maybe Fry's, maybe a Micro Center, maybe uh, certain Best Buys that do carry uh, graphics cards like this, then the consumer is just not going to know any better. Now there has been naming mishaps by other companies in the uh, recent past. The GTX 1060 to me is a problem because the 1066 gigabyte version is a better chip outside of the memory allocation, being six gigabytes over three gigabytes, than the three gigabyte version, uh, which is more of a nerfed 1060 chip as well as having less VRAM. And when that happens, we expect there to be different names that make it easy for consumers that aren't really into technology all that much to look online for some benchmarks and assume that's what they're picking up when they walk into the store. But at least in this instance, NVIDIA was upfront about it. They never tried to hide the fact that the three gigabyte version wasn't as good as the six gigabyte version. They were kind of upfront about it. I disagree with the naming of it, but they were at least upfront about it. This wasn't the case with AMD this time around. They had the RX 560, which had its own set of benchmarks already reviewed by reviewers out there. So as a consumer, it makes sense that I would just hop on YouTube or hop on the internet and type in RX 560 benchmarks, look at what it had to offer. And if I was happy with that, I would go buy it. Unfortunately for some consumers, that meant they went out and bought a card with only 14 compute units and less stream processors, where they were looking at benchmarks for a card that was reviewed when it first came out with the 16 compute unit uh, version. So you are selling a different card altogether than the one that was reviewed by reviewers and put out there. And you didn't even have the courtesy to come out and say, hey, by the way, we're introducing another 560 variant. Just so you know, it's a little bit nerfed. And then once AMD was caught, they sort of apologized, but kind of also shifted blame to their uh, board partners saying, well, you know, it was really up to them to make sure the public knew. So ultimately it is not just the blame falling on AMD. It also does fall on some of the board partners that uh, weren't very clear in, uh, in showing that their new RX 560s may not have as many compute units as the original versions. But I mean, AMD is the chip manufacturer here. They're the chip designer. It, it the, the brunt of the blame does fall on them and shame on them because this is just uh, really ripping off some consumers that may not really have thought to look deeper into this. And frankly, even as a tech enthusiast, I'm not sure I would have looked deep enough into it and looked clear down the spec sheet to make sure that an RX 560 matched up with what I thought an RX 560 was. So in my mind, the AMD apology, while it does look like they're doing the things they should have done originally, comes across as more of a, oh, well, 
you caught me guys, I guess I'll fix it now. But that's kind of where I stand on this whole 560 debacle. It is more of a budget card, which sort of falls below the realm of things that I normally look at since uh, uh, most of the cards I look at are more of the mid-tier budget cards like a 1050 Ti and up. I've never looked at a 560 before. I have looked at 460s before. So uh, let me know in the comments down below what you think of this. Does this change your opinion a little bit of AMD? Or uh, do you think it's perfectly okay maybe? I would be interested to hear what you have to say. But also, as always, if you like this content, give it a like, share, subscribe, and comment down below. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up some more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.